Hello Champions and Future Champions, Hello Chess Mode Family, GM Gabuzian is here with you and in this little bit long video we are gonna be covering all daily lessons tests for the January month. So if you are pressing your answers in the comment section and now you are curious whether you were right or not, you will see. Let's get started with the first position with the useless bishop topic. So in this position it's white to move. Black is having bishop on b7 which wants to take knight on f3. Cause otherwise bishop on b7 is doing nothing. It's not gonna get any features to go to b1 square butter white pawn chain. Meanwhile pawn on c5 is a weakness so white can be attacking this. And for that reason in this position white is starting with knight e1 move. So now bishop on b7 is completely matching to our topic. It's a useless piece. And after knight d7 we go knight d3 followed by bishop a3. Pawn on c5 cannot be protected. So in a few moves white is gonna win the pawn and get a decisive advantage in this position and will be winning. Let me now guys change this position for you. This is guys test position for SU35 daily lesson. If you remember in that topic we are discussing situations when we need to create a game. And obviously we need to create a game on the side of the board wherever we are stronger. White now is not stronger on the king side, white pieces are not aiming anywhere, center is empty and Let's take a look at white bishops. Both of them are aiming on the queen side now. Only inactive piece is white's rook. And with the first a4 move, white is trying to create a game on the side of the board wherever white is stronger, as well activating the rook. So with a5 idea, we'll try to open here some lines, some diagonals, make our pieces stronger and create weaknesses for opponent. Let me now guys change the position for you again. This position guys is test for daily lesson 3 tactics in chess. But on top of that this position is a daily lesson on its own. This is daily lesson number 4 and you have already seen it. Now let me change position for you and show you the test for this position. So now we can see a test for the previous position. In this situation Pawn on g3 is under a pin because of rook on g8 and it cannot be taking queen on h4. Otherwise, black is threatening checkmate through h2 square. Looks like white is in a very difficult situation, guys. But we have check that saves the game, guys. Here white is playing very strong queen g7 check. Our goal is to close diagonal for this rook and then we will get the chance to take queen on h4. Even we are gonna be sacrificing the queen, it's not so important, cause we have few extra pawns on the queen side, we would be happy to go for this endgame. Also, if we don't play queen g7, we are gonna get checkmated. So if black now takes with king, we can take on h4, it's a little more reasonable for black to try rook g7 move. But now again, we have rook e8 check, rook g8 and eventually we are changing off this rook on g file. So rook takes, king takes and g takes h4. And now white is having advantage of several pawns, easily winning this game. Let me again change the position for you guys. This is a position for a daily lesson, show your cards guys. In this situation white is having a choice. We can be castling short side, or we can be castling long side, trying to attack on black king. Both options seem to be interesting. But before showing our cards, in this position white is going knight to e5. Our next move is gonna be f4 as well, which will be useful in both cases, whether we decide to go to the long or to the short sides of the board. And in this case black here will be losing a time without knowing which idea to pick up. Because whenever we are going to the short side, black should be picking one idea and when we go to the long side, threatening some attacks, 
Black also should be playing differently. So with this knight e5 and f4 maneuver guys we are winning a time and putting black in a difficult situation. Let me now again change position for you. This is a test for show your cards daily lesson part 2 guys. In this situation black is having very strong bishop on c5 which is preventing white rooks from going to e7 and make activity on the 7th rank as well it's preventing white knight from going to g5 and give some very dangerous checks cause pawn on f2 is hanging. So in this position white is playing with b4 move. Now we're asking this bishop to decide whether to keep activity on f2 pawn or on e7 square. If black is now going to bishop d6 we can be going knight g5 and suddenly knight e6 threat is unstoppable. Or if after before black is going bishop e7, white is eventually gaining activity on the 7th rank, playing rook e7 check, king f7 rook takes, and after king f7 knight g5 check, followed by rook e7 on the next move, so king g8 and rook e7. Let me now guys again change position for you. This is a test position for a daily lesson with your weak pawn. In this position black is having two weak pawns at the same time. Obviously biggest weakness is pawn on g7. Also pawn on e6 is a fixed weakness for white. So if we allow white to consolidate and attack our pawns we are gonna be having very hard times. So now black is playing very strong g5 move. Trying to get rid of this weakened pawn on g7. And after I take g5, we are gonna go rook g8. On top of grabbing pawn on g5, we also now not have our e6 pawn fixed, and in future, we will easily be able to advance this pawn, going e5, and getting rid of this weakness as well. Let me again change position for you and go to our next example. This is a test position for a daily lesson counterattack with a long diagonal. It's black to move here. White obtained a nice space advantage on the king side and is trying to make some activity there. As well, white is controlling this d5 square. Black has a very strong bishop on a8, but its potential is not released enough because of pawn on e4. Also, because of g4 move, white king is weakened at the same time. So, for that reason, it's very easy to find here for black d5 move. We are playing d5, trying to get rid of these pawns, and our bishop on n8 will become just a monster, making huge pressure on white's king position. So, with d5 move, black is creating a very strong counterplay with bishop on a8, guys. Let me change this position for you and go to the next example. This is a test position for a daily lesson planning in the middle opening. It's a very interesting position. It's black to move. We have some pieces undeveloped, mostly our rooks, our queen and our bishop, and we need to decide their future. White for the next move is looking for bishop h6, trying to get rid of this strong bishop on g7. So it's very reasonable for the first move for black to go rook b8. Now we are keeping an eye on pawn on b2 and white can no longer go bishop h6 as after it takes pawn on b2 will start hanging. If white now is going b3 we are also activating our queen going to a5. It was really obvious guys that we need to have our rook on the half open b file as well having queen here attacking pawn on c3. Now there is a rook takes b3 threat, cause rook on a1 is gonna be hanging. Also now we will have some chances to decide whether we need to go with this bishop to a6 or to e6 move, but it was really obvious that we need to activate our queen and our rook as soon as possible, and after bishop c2 trying to protect pawn on b3, black is also going bishop to e6, extra time attacking this pawn and making white in a difficult situation. So with a few very simple moves, black is planning a very nice middle game strategy and activating the pieces. Let me again change position for you. 
This is a test position for stopping the counterplay daily lesson. It's a Rosalima pawn structure. White is having some space advantage in a center. Black pieces are limited because of these pawns, and white is obviously looking for some attack on the king side, bringing slowly the pieces. But the thing is, if we instantly go for the king side, let's say with some queen h4 moves, black is gonna be having c4 trying to open up this bishop's position and create some counterplay in a center, which is not so good. So for this reason, at the beginning position, white is playing with b3 move. We are preventing c4 move, fixing this weakness as well, not allowing this bishop to join the game. So with this little tempo west, which can never be considered as a wasted time, we are stopping all black's activities in the center and white will be looking for some further attacks on black king. So with b3 move we are stopping our opponent's counterplay. Let's now guys change the position and go for the next one. This is a test for a daily lesson how to break solid positions. In this situation black bishops are aiming for a white king side. But this pawn chain is very solid, there are no weaknesses, as well these pawns are limiting bishop on c6. Black cannot be breaking through the queen side, cause now we have doubled pawns here and we cannot make any activities. So only place left on the board is the king side. And that's why black is now going with g5. The idea is, we want to go with g4, break this pawn chain, activate our bishop on c6 and as well join with our rook through the g file. If now white is going bishop f2, black just goes g4, destroys this pawn chain and will gonna be bringing rook to g8 square, making a huge pressure on this side. If after g5 white is taking, it's even better. We go rook g8, attacking the bishop. If now this bishop is going somewhere, let's say back to e3, we can be taking pawn on f3. If after rook g8 white is going h4, we don't care about the second pawn, we will be playing h6. Our only goal is to remove this bishop from this diagonal, and after bishop h6, bishop takes f3, black is destroying white's king side. Pawn on g2 is gonna be lost, cause rook is under attack at the same time, and if white tries to play rook d2, we can be playing bishop c5 check, king goes somewhere, take on d2, and after that, take on g2, getting a decisive advantage with a very near winning for black. Let's now change this position again. This is a test for a daily lesson win winning positions. White is having two pawns advantage. But the thing is, white king is very much weakened, it's advanced, it's not having a very good pawn cover, and also black strong pieces are nearby. So, if white makes sure this king is in safety, very probably white is gonna be winning this game. Obviously, the most dangerous piece for our king is opponent's queen, and we need to get rid of it from the board. So here, white is making very strong queen b1 move. This queen has nowhere to go near to our king, it cannot go retreat back to the king set positions, and if black takes queen to b1, rook b1, we're trading of the queens and getting a winning endgame with two pawn advantage. Or if after a queen b1, black is going back queen to a6, now this queen is gonna be too far from the game and our king will be in safety. So again, no many dangerous threats for our king and we will be using our two pawns advantage for white. Let's change this position now guys and go for next test. This is a test position for fixing the weakness daily lesson. It's white to move here and I am sure many of you guys found the easy h4, knight e6 and h4 maneuver. Fixing pawn on g7 which is a big weakness with our strong pawn on h5. In future we will be able to go knight f5 and attack this pawn and make a huge pressure on black's position. But let me tell you a secret. 
This is second best continuation and there was a little trick in this example, cause in the first position, instead of playing h4, white had different move. Here, bishop a4 is pinning pawn on c6 and suddenly pawn on d5 is gonna be lost instantly. So maybe some of you were careful and found strong bishop a4 idea. Now this king cannot be leaving this square cause pawn on c6 will be lost, otherwise we are just gonna be winning pawn on d5 guys. So be careful and check all your options in the positions. Let's go ahead to next example. This is a test for daily lesson with your weak pawns part 2. In this position white is having doubled pawns on the d5. If it's black to move, black in this position would be going with knight to d6, fixing them and later on making a huge pressure. But fortunately this time it's our move and in this position white is supposed to get rid of one of these pawn pairs, so playing d6 here. The idea is that after knight d6 playing d5 we are opening our bishop on this long diagonal, which is becoming a very strong piece. And later on with some queen d4 move we are going to be making a huge pressure. Even f6 move will not be able to stop our pressure cause it will just become a weakness. So for this reason in the first position white is going d6 and getting rid of the weak pawn, activating other pieces. Let's now change this position guys. This is a test position for attack like a viking daily lesson. In this situation, black king is in a very bad spot, white pieces are nearby and making some pressure on this king's position. But our queen is too far and we need to include it into the game. The easiest way to bring this queen is gonna be the direct queen e1 move, we are just looking for queen a5. If now black is playing rook h h8, we play queen a5 check king c8 and knight c5. The thing is that bishop on g4 is gonna be creating f6 check threats whenever black will be moving this knight from this position. Or if here black is taking with the bishop, white can play f6 first, make this pin and after g takes f6, white can take bishop to c5 with a winning position in a very few moves. If after first queen e1, black is taking rook g4, getting rid of this strong bishop, white is just taking king g4, our king is super safe even being advanced so much, so white is having an extra exchange and still will be creating very big threats over the black king with queen a5 move. So very important maneuver playing queen from g1 to e1 and a5, going closer to opponent's king. Have in your mind guys that whenever you are trying to create an attack, your queen is a very important and strong piece. Let's go ahead to the next position. This is a test for attack like a viking part 2, open up the lines. In this situation black king is very abandoned because other pieces are not developed and black is having only good pawn cover for this king. Definitely white should try to break through and as well white is having two bishops advantage and we have bishop on dark square which black is not having. So it's super obvious that first move here is supposed to be pawn to e5. We are just trying to break this pawn chain. After d takes e5, d5, if black plays f takes e5, white is easily winning with bishop g5 move, so this king is now completely naked and will be checkmated soon. Or if after d takes e5, black plays queen e5, white is having a very strong bishop d4, now these both bishops are aiming on black king and it's very dangerous. After a move like queen d6 or maybe queen e7, white can even be taking queen g5 because this pawn is under a pin and it cannot be taking, so white is winning this way. After bishop d4, 
Black can try to go queen a5, but another strong move, c5, cutting this queen off from black's queen side is winning the game. Let's go to the next position again. This is a test for daily lesson check that saves lives part 2. Here white has rook d6 move, and the idea is that after e takes d6, white is playing bishop c6 check. Black can go either king f8 or king d8, but in both cases queen e8 is a checkmate. Just the thing is, that after rook d6, black is having a check which is saving their life. Black can play bishop c3 check. So now if white is taking with the knight, black can grab the rook. And if white is taking with the pawn, after e takes d6, this king is getting a square to escape from checkmate. After bishop c6, black has king f8. And after queen e8 check, black is having king g7 square. So at the beginning, bishop c3 check is saving black's life. Let's go to the next position. This is a test for a daily lesson, king's safety. Here we are supposed to evaluate the position and figure out the ideas for white. First of all, let's take a look at white king. This king is surrounded by the doubled pawns on the b-file, and also we have outpost on b5 square. First opinion may be, wow, there are doubled pawns near to the king, it's bad. No guys, in real, this king is extremely safe. First of all, this outpost and peace piece on this outpost are creating a very strong defense on the b file. So, black is not gonna be able to break through. Pawns on b3 and b2 are taking many important squares and black rooks on the c file are not going to be able to do anything. The only available square for black pieces is going to be b4. But first of all, black will waste the time transferring one of the pieces to this square. On top of that, our king will still be safe on b1, covered with these pawns and piece on b5. So, we already know that white king is doing great. Now it's time to keep an eye on black king, which is little bit abandoned, cause all black army is on the queen side, and there is only one knight left on f6. So here, starting with h4, white is gonna be creating a huge attack and bothering black's king position. So our evaluation is white king is safer and white's position is better, starting with attack through the h file. Let's go ahead to the next example. This is a test from Latvian Gambit daily lesson. Here it's white to move and you are supposed to find a little and beautiful tactical short for white guys. Now white is taking, knight takes f6. If black is taking with a pawn or with a bishop let's say, we are playing bishop d5 pinning the queen and eventually winning it. So, after knight takes f6 check, only move available for black is queen takes f6. But now white is winning in a different way, playing bishop d5 check and after king h8, easily winning with knight g6. What's happening now? If black takes queen g6, rook f8 is a checkmate. And if after a king h8, knight g6 check, if black is taking with a pawn, we are taking rook takes f6 and having queen for rook and the knight, which is obviously winning for white. Let's go ahead to the next one. This is a test from when it's exception daily lesson. In this position, black played, knight takes g3. And Usually our reaction would be h takes g3, but in this exceptional case, white is playing f takes g3, taking pawn far from the center, but instead we're opening a rook's position on the f file. As well, black will have some issues with castling, cause pawn on h5 is hanging, so taking on g3, white is creating a huge activity. It has happened h4 here, and White goes bishop g4, another very strong move. h takes g3, 
pawn takes and black goes queen e7, which is followed by another very dangerous for black idea, a4. In these French pawn structures, when pawns are located like this and white is having pawn chain c3, d4, e5. This bishop on c1 is not having a very bright feature on the king side through c1, h6 diagonal. But in this variation, when black is giving away this bishop on c3 square, white has this a3 wonderful and strong option for white bishop. So after bishop a4, white is going rook a1, later on activating this bishop through a3 and making an insane pressure on black's position. By the way guys, you may be finding full game commented in our classical middle game course in chessmood website. So taking first move f takes g3, white is creating a huge activity. Let's now go for the next position. This is a test for daily lesson attack like a viking part 3 target weak pawn. White is having a huge attack now. Black's king's position is crushed. We have a very strong pawn chain, giving us very nice squares, as well fixing some weak pawns. White can be now going bishop e3 and queen d2, attacking h6 with a logical way. But it's just stronger to make very quiet and at the same time killing queen d2 move, instantly aiming for pawn on h6 square. If black here is going queen e6, white is winning with another strong rook f6 move, closing queen defense on h6 square, we are just gonna be taking it next move and making a checkmate. So let's say after knight takes f6, white is taking queen h6, and after king g8, white is taking knight takes f6 check, forcing black to give away the queen and also we will be checkmating soon. Very quiet and strong queen d2 move in the beginning, guys. Let's now go ahead to the next position. This is a test for a daily lesson Attack Like a Viking Part 4 Target Weak Pawn. In this situation, many black pieces are aiming for white's king. Mostly bishop on c8, bishop on b8, knights may be joining soon, but most important piece, which is the queen, is not having great options to join the game now. If we go queen d7, we will not find good squares nearby to white king, cause this pawn chain is protecting everything. For that reason, black is beginning here with queen c7 move, attacking pawn on h2 and trying to provoke g3 move. And after this, black is playing queen to d7, and already is aiming for d square on h3, in which case black will start a very strong attack. So with this nice and simple maneuver provoking a weakness, black is starting a very strong game on white's king side. Let's now go ahead to the next example. This position is test for a daily lesson chess battery but as well it was a daily lesson on its own, so you have already seen it guys, and for that reason let's go ahead to the next one. This is also a test for the battery daily lesson. And here what is having already a battery, but a little bit wrong one, cause usually in this situation we would like to have our queen instead of the bishop and bishop behind the queen to be able to create some threats near to black king, as now if we go bishop g8 it wouldn't be anything dangerous for black. So for this reason, in the first position, white is going queen to e2. Idea is very very simple. White is trying to create a battery, playing bishop to a2 and queen to c4. So it's happening knight g6, bishop a2, Knight d7, trying to prevent some concrete threats, but again with queen c4, white is gaining a very huge advantage, this threat is gonna be available all the game and our queen is gonna be advancing as well and create very dangerous threats for black's position. So very simple and interesting battery creation by white. 
let me change this position again. This is a test for a daily lesson converting advantage going to winning pawn and game. In this position, white is having an option to take on e5 with a check, give away the f7 pawn and try to play that position. But as well, white is having an option to play queen g3 check. If black king is not taking the pawn, it's gonna be promoted into a queen. So black has to take, king takes f7. And now white is playing queen b3 check, trading of the queens. So after queen b3, king b3, let's take a look at this position. White is having passed pawn on the a file, black has passed pawn on the e file. But the thing is, we have also pawns left on the h file. And whenever black king will go after our pawn on a4, our king is gonna be closer to pawn on e5, which is also closer to pawn on h7. So we will be winning pawn on e5 and going for pawn on h7. Because of that, white will be winning the game. But it's not so simple yet. Cause after a king e6, king c4 and king d6, instead of immediately going after this pawn, white can be making a smart move. Cause we figure out that in future we will try to push on the h file our pawn. We may try to advance it now going h4 and preparing for this king d3, king e4, king e5 idea, give away a4 and go for this h pawn. As closer our pawn will be to promotion square, as more chances we will have to win. So after h4, black is not gonna be on time to take our pawn and go back. If black now is going king c6, we will start advancing our pawn even more, going h5, trying h6, then our pawn will be very close to promotion square. Or if after h4 black is going h5, we're still gonna be on time cause now after king d3, king c5, king e4, king b4 and king e5, black will not be on time to take this pawn and go back to defend. So our king is gonna be faster, we'll be taking this pawn on h5, putting our king on g7 and advancing our pawn to a queen. I know this was a little bit long calculation, but winning a chess game is worth it to make some difficult thoughts in the end games. So nice example how to transpose to opponent game and win it. Let's now go ahead to the next example. This is a test position for daily lesson weak pawn. In this position is white to move and first of all we are supposed to figure out which pawns are weak for black. Obviously, pawn on a7 is weak, but this pawn only can be attacked with our rook. Obviously, pawn on c6 is weak, but this time all white pieces may be joining to attack this pawn. So, in the first position, we are starting to regroup our pieces, as we have seen in daily lesson about this topic. White can be transferring this bishop from different places. My preference is going to bishop e2 move, keeping it close to white king and going bishop to f3. This is a fixed weakness and black can be doing nothing about it. If black tries to go king f7, we go bishop f3. And after king e8, white can be going either knight c4 or knight to d3, threatening knight b4 or knight e5. And especially after king d7, knight e5 is very strong cause we are giving a check to black king preventing it from defense of c6 pawn and eventually white will be taking on c6, getting a winning advantage. So once again, since the beginning position, white is starting the regrouping and bringing all pieces to attack the pawn on c6. Let me change this position for you again and go to the next example. This is a test position for a power of bishop pair topic. As we have seen previously, bishop pair is very strong on the open board. And in this situation, white is having two bishops for the rook and two pawns of opponent. So we need to do something about it and try to trap this rook on c8. So white is starting with bishop a6. Now this bishop is taking these squares and bishop on f4 is taking the others. After 
rook c6, we go bishop b7. Again, we are taking these three squares from the rook with our bishops. And after rook e6, which is again only available square, now we play bishop d5. And again, all the squares are taken, but this time there is an exception. White king is also supporting the bishops, taking these two squares, and it just becomes obvious that black rook is again trapped in the middle of the board. So white is going to be taking the rook and winning the game. Let's go ahead to the next position. This is a test position for a power of bishop pair part 2 about the end game. And, as we know, in end games we are supposed to make our bishops stronger. So in this position, white is having good bishops in the center, but pawn structure is a little bit closed. So I'm sure many of you suggested for white to play very strong before a move. With the idea of c5, we will be trading off some pawns, create some weakness on dark squares, and we will have a dark squared bishop to attack them. As well, opening up position will be useful for both of our bishops. But on top of that, there was a little tricky spot here again, because b4 is only second best move. And instead of playing it, white is even having a stronger option, which is in the first position to play bishop f6 instead of going b4. The idea is that white is threatening to go bishop to d8 paralyzing black's pawn structure. Black cannot go king to e8, because this knight is under attack. So after knight e8 and bishop d8, now these pieces are not gonna be able to make any progress. And basically, white is cutting black king from the queenside pawns. In future, white will go king to d4, pawn b4, c5, and slowly will be winning this pawn on c7 and will be winning the game. So once again, be careful about all of your available options. Let's go ahead to the next position. This is a test for a daily lesson, power of bishop pair part three, bishops versus the knights. In this position, there is only one pawn pair left. But still, white is gonna get a great chances to win this game because of bishop's power. In the first move, white is playing bishop e5 check. On top of taking our bishop from the attack with the tempo, we, after king c2, are blocking all knight moves on the h5 square, so this knight has no any available moves. Now, knight on d8 is left, and our next move is gonna be to play Bishop to d5, and this knight now is not having any available squares. So with our bishops, we are just killing black knights, and with a very simple idea, with just king d6 and king d7, we will be winning black knight, and slowly will be winning the game. So bishops are insane, and they are able to kill knights on the open board very well. Let me change position for you, and let's go for the next one. This is a test position for a daily lesson, weak central pawn. Let's take a look at the pawn structure here. Black is having a very nice pawns in the center, controlling very important squares. As well, black has a strong bishop, which is controlling the other squares, and as well attacking pawn on c4. Black is not having any weaknesses, but this pawn on e4 may be a great subject for an attack. Just if we try attacking it right away, white will be able to play d3 and will easily protect this pawn. So for this reason, at the beginning, black is playing extremely strong c4 move, cutting this pawn chain and not allowing white to play d3, defending pawn on e4. So after c4, black is gonna be playing either knight f6 or by any chance knight c5, and make an extremely big pressure on pawn on e4, bringing black a huge advantage. So c4 move is a decisive one and is killing pawn on e4. Let me change this position and go for the next one. 
This is a test for daily lesson sneaky queen a4 and queen a5 checks. In this position is black to move and black will be willing to play queen a5 check and after some move play g5 and trap this bishop. But the thing is that after first queen a5 check white can be going queen to d2 and we're not gonna be able to play g5 and take this bishop because our queen is under attack. So, for this reason, in the first position, black is starting with g5 right away, having after bishop g5 a very sneaky queen a5 check, which is winning the bishop and winning the game. So guys, this was the last position for our January coverage, I hope you enjoyed it and in some case if your answers were wrong, you figured out the correct ones. GM Gabuzian was here with you. Thank you for your subscriptions, likes, and sharing this video with your friends. We appreciate it a lot. See you next time during our next daily lessons.